So bloating and or distension is a very common kind of symptom experience in IBS and also was commonly looked at in probiotic studies. So we had a lot to work with here. And after we went through over 40 probiotics across the 69 randomized placebo-controlled trials that we looked into, we did find some standouts for these symptoms. Now, if you notice that I said symptoms as in plural, that's because these are two distinct symptoms. We have grouped them together because sometimes they were measured together. But basically, bloating is a sensation of almost like a balloon being inflated in the belly, whereas distension is a measurable change in abdominal circumference and girth. And you can actually have one without the other or both at the same time. Now, semantics aside, we had four probiotics that made it into our rankings for bloating and or distension. And if you wanna know how a probiotic makes it into our rankings, you can see our criteria here. Now, one quick interjection here, but if you're watching this video somewhere other than ibsprobiotics.org, know that everything I'm about to cover comes directly from that site. Now that site is a completely free research tool that I've been working on for the past two years, digging through loads of clinical trials of probiotics and IBS to see which ones have shown promise and which specific symptoms in IBS they seem to target. So if you wanna learn which probiotics might actually target your specific symptoms, definitely check out the site. And then if you find something promising, head over to probioticfinder.org where you can see all of the products that contain that probiotic compared. So first up, number one in our rankings is the probiotic Lactospore. This was studied in a small IBSD population and symptom scores for bloating improved substantially by almost 42% from baseline. And we also calculated a very strong effect size of 2.19, earning this probiotic our number one ranking. Coming in at number two is Desimone formulation. Now this multi-strain probiotic blend used to go by the name of VSL number three, back prior to 2016, but currently is sold under the brand name of Visbiome in the US. Now there were six small studies that evaluated this probiotic formulation for the symptoms of bloating and distension. And if you read through the details that we have written here, you'll see that those results were mixed, but in the end, the tilt was in favor of this probiotic possibly having benefits for these symptoms. Taking into account all six studies on this probiotic blend, we calculated a weighted mean effect size of 2.14 for bloating and distension, earning Desimone formulation the number two spot in our rankings. Coming in at number three is the probiotic Bacillus coagulans unique IS2, which has shown promise for the symptom of bloating in two separate IBS populations, one with adults and one with children. Bloating symptom score improvements in these two studies were in the ballpark of about a 60% to 80% improvement from baseline. And then taking into account results from both studies, we calculated a really strong weighted mean effect size of 1.68 for the symptom of bloating for this probiotic, earning it our number three spot in the rankings. And then finally, our number four ranking is the multi-strain probiotic called BioCult, which was studied in a large IBSD population and found to help the symptom of distension. After four months of taking this probiotic, there was a 66.5% improvement in scores for distension, and we calculated a moderate effect size, earning this probiotic our number four spot in the rankings. Now you may notice that we also have an honorable mention section here where we've mentioned Paragurt and Probiotech. Technically, these probiotics met certain parameters to make it into our rankings, but were put as honorable mentions for other reasons that we've gone into details about here if you're curious about that. Now, if you wanna learn how other probiotics that I haven't talked about here have impacted symptoms like bloating or distension in the literature, then scroll down to the bottom of this page where you can find our full database. And then if you wanna learn more about the probiotics I have discussed here, you can click on the icons for those individual pages to learn more about other symptoms that they may have been helpful or not helpful for. That's all I have to say on this topic, but just know that this should not be misconstrued as medical advice, and please be sure to touch base with your medical provider before trying a probiotic.